back to the Style and Beauty Doctor on YouTube and in today's video, I'm gonna be trying out three Korean physical sunscreens because, you know, it's quite easy to make a chemical sunscreen that blends easily into a deeper skin tone quite like mine, but the physical ones can get a little, you know, some of them get a little janky. But you know, sometimes the Korean skincare has a, a, a corner on the market when it comes to sunscreen. So I have three of them that I'm going to be trying out in this video. Are they gonna make me look ashy? Am I gonna be a ghost face killer or not? Keep watching. Okay, so I think we need to go over the difference between physical and chemical sunscreens. And I realized that because in my last video where I was trying out physical sunscreens, um, a lot, a couple people in the comments were like, what are you doing? You need to try Unseen from Supergoop, but Unseen from Supergoop is a chemical sunscreen, which would have defeated the whole purpose of me trying out physical sunscreens for the video. So let me just give you a quick and dirty overview. So in a nutshell, physical sunscreens sit on top of the skin, they reflect the sun's UV rays and bounce them off. So it's kind of like a superhero shield, kind of like a pew pew kind of action. Physical sunscreens you may also hear called mineral sunscreens because they're made of minerals. Chemical sunscreens on the other hand are absorbed into the skin. The sun's UV rays are absorbed, there's a chemical reaction that happens and then the UV rays are then released as heat. Now there are pros and cons to both the chemical sunscreen and the physical sunscreen. However, why I am doing more of the physical sunscreen trials is because I've had people say that they're allergic to sunscreen, um, not realizing that you know people can be allergic to chemical sunscreens. So I wanted to try more physical sunscreens, but physical sunscreens can tend to look a little ashy as I mentioned before, but we are seeing more cosmetically elegant ones. And here we are. So hopefully that cleared things up. Um, if you wanna check out more sunscreens that I've tried out, both chemical and physical, there is a link in the description box to non-ashy sunscreens. I've tried a lot of them over the years. Please check that out if you're looking to, you know, try another sunscreen. Shout out to Sweet Marsha who left a comment on my physical sunscreen video because she reminded me how bomb Korean sunscreens are. Let's get into it. So first up we have the Etude Sunrise Mild Air Refresh SPF 50. That is a mouthful. Now all of these are going to be straight up sunscreens and by that I mean you know you put your moisturizer on and then you put this on top. I used to wear a lot of moisturizers that have SPF in them. I mean I still do um, and I still like them but I've grown to really like having a separate straight up sunscreen because then I feel like you know I'm really getting the amount of sunscreen that I need because you know you gotta put on enough in order for you to get the SPF that's written on the label. With this one when I put it on I, I kind of couldn't tell. I was like kind of looking through the um, screen and I'm like does this look ashy on camera? Because it looks a little ashy on camera. Um, but then I went into the bathroom and kind of looked at it. It has a very slight cast, which I think will look fine in person. Um, I don't take pictures with flash, um, but sunscreen is also something that you're gonna wear during the day. And I don't know, how often are you taking pictures with flash during the day? I just feel like natural light pictures just look so much better. Um, and the reason why I'm alluding to this is because I do find, feel that if you had this sunscreen on and then you took a picture, you might have like that ghastly kind of look, the kind of cast that it leaves on the skin. It's, it, the cast isn't very noticeable in natural light, but I think like a flash might kind of, you know, exaggerate it. So be a little bit careful with that one. I did like that it had a soft matte finish. It has a faint fragrance to it. Um. It's very light, like there's a fragrance there, but it's not, you know, very heavy. Now, fragrance to me can be a deal breaker sometimes with skincare, for others it might not be. But, you know, I like to mention whether or not there's a fragrance because, you know, fragrance is one of those things where it's like, ah, I don't want that fragrance or, eh, I don't mind. Um, but it does have a faint fragrance. This sunscreen can feel like there's nothing on but because of the slight cast that it left on my skin, now it wasn't ashy, but there was like a little something there. 
um, I could tell that I had something on. It feels like there's nothing on, like if you were to touch it, but because of the little slight cast, it kind of like, you can kind of see it. And then I wouldn't think that this would be the best sunscreen for someone with drier skin, maybe in the summertime. Um, but because it has that matte finish to it, I can, I can see that being maybe a little drying on someone with a drier skin type. So there's that. So next up from Eleven Village Factory, we have the Hydra Sun Fluid SPF 50. This one has a slight cooling feeling to it. Like it's kind of like really refreshing. I tried it like not too soon after it was delivered to me from Amazon, you know, after I sanitized all my stuff. So it wasn't anywhere super, super cool. Um, I would assume that, you know, it was at the same room temperature as the other sunscreen. So this definitely has some sort of like cooling kind of feeling to it. There's a noticeable fragrance to this, but it didn't personally bother me. Like I said it before, fragrance is very subjective. Some people it can bother, some people it won't. As far as the finish, this has a very slight matte finish to it. Not as matte um as the sun prize but you can you know you can tell that it's a little bit of you know it's, it's it's a little matte i would say it's more like a satin matte soft matte kind of finish it feels like there's absolutely nothing on which is great because one of the things with sunscreen is that you know it's kind of like a trial and error there's so many sunscreens out there and you want to find the one that feels good because if it feels good you can actually wear it um, I can't stand a heavy feeling, I can't stand a heavy feeling anything, but I especially can't stand a heavy sunscreen and you know this one as well as the sun prize felt very light like I had nothing on at all. Um, again this one may not be the best um, option for someone with drier skin. Um, I was watching one of the, um, an Asian YouTuber who does skincare, I'll put her name up on the screen because I can't recall it right now. But I was actually watching her video to get some ideas on um, some physical sunscreens. Um, I would say maybe about 90% of the ones that she tried, I didn't even bother trying because she said some of them had a left a white cast on her skin. And I'm like, if it's going to leave a white cast on your skin, I ain't even going to bother. But she had said that because she has a drier skin type that she prefers some of the physical sunscreens that we have here in the U.S. Because they're not as, you know, for oilier skin types as some of the ones that she's experienced in you know korean skincare so something to think about if you have drier skin doesn't necessarily mean you know it's hands off for you um completely it might be something that's more of like a summertime kind of thing if you have a drier skin type next up we have the porito comfy water sunblock spf 50. now this is the one that sweet marcia and yes marcia you are sweet <laughs> this is the one that marcia from the brand that marcia said that she likes um, and I actually wound up really liking this sunscreen as well. I would definitely say don't put too much of it on at a time. Like do a little bit and then put a little bit more and then put a little bit more. Because what happens is if you put too much and then you try to blend it in, it's, for, for me at least, it was just like a like very hard to you know really get into the skin and it was just like a mess. So just try to do a little at a time. Make sure you overall put enough on, but don't you know put the whole bunch and then apply it. I hope I'm making sense, you know? I'm making sense, hit that like button. Well, hit the like button anyway if you enjoyed the whole entire video. Don't judge me just on that one part, okay? <laughs> but this sunscreen looks amazing on, I would say out of the, all three of these, this one is the one that had more of like a natural skin finish. It wasn't matte and it wasn't dewy. It was just like right in the middle, very natural, very nice. Couple things to note about physical sunscreens. Um, one, when you're going to cleanse at night, you may want to do a double cleanse because of the way that physical sunscreens work and the way that they sit on top of your skin. Might be, you know, not as easy to wash it off with just your single cleanse. Um, make sure you check out my Are You Probably Cleansing Your Skin video, which I did with my esthetician homie from Florida Lee's Beauty. Um, also thing, another thing that you want to keep in mind with the physical sunscreens, when you're applying makeup, now this can be a different experience for different people because, you know, we use different uh, foundation formulas, um, you know, we have different makeup techniques, we have different skin types, so this can vary from person to person, so this is just like a general kind of keep your eye out for this kind of thing thing. When you're putting your foundation on, 
um, especially if you're using like a cream or a liquid, you want to kind of dab with a makeup sponge. That way you're not moving the sunscreen and you know, you're not disturbing it. You also kind of want to give it like 15 minutes before you move on to your makeup, just to give the sunscreen time to settle um, before you go and put something on top of it because you don't want to have like clumping. You don't want some kind of like weird kind of like pilling or any kind of thing to kind of disturb the sunscreen, you know, when you're putting your makeup on. I, I would say that I liked all three and I can find a usage for all three in my routine. Um, if I had to pick my favorite though, I think, I don't know, I can't, I don't know. I would say maybe like it's between the Hydra Sun Fluid and the Perito. It's like, they're like neck and neck for like my, my top favorite. And that's not to say that I didn't enjoy the Sun Prize, but you know, the others were just a little, you know, a little bit, I like that a little bit more. I will leave links for all three in the description box. So if you were interested in checking them out, you can check them out. Um, but for now, I want you to get all chitty chatty in the comments. Like, let me know, have you tried any of these three sunscreens? Would you try any of these three sunscreens? Are you more of a chemical sunscreen kind of gal? Let me know that in the comments. Follow me on social. I'll have the links in the description box because a girl is trying to grow her numbers, especially on Instagram, you know, and here on YouTube as well. YouTube and Instagram. I would like the numbers to, you know, to grow. On Instagram, I share some really great skincare content that you're not going to see here on YouTube. And then there's also my blog where I go into detail about many, many skincare subjects. And then when outside opens up, I'll start posting some more fashion, OOTDs, outfit of the day, my own personal style posts on my blog. But follow me everywhere. Click it, link it. Slip it up, flip it, rub it down. Oh no, whatever you got to do. And I will see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.